There are three simple techniques every pro runner uses that anybody can use to run faster and stay injury free. Let's jump right into the first one. Your running posture and nailing the forward lean. You might have heard some runners talking about achieving a forward lean as brilliantly demonstrated by current marathon world record holder Kelvin Kiptum in this slow motion footage. Now notice how he's running with a whole body forward lean rather than simply bending forwards at the waist, which is a common mistake. Bending forwards at the waist may feel like you're leaning forwards, but in reality you're pushing your hips back and leading with the chest. Instead, focus on holding your hips high, up and forwards as you run. This should feel like you're maintaining an aligned posture from top to toe. As you increase the pace, lean forwards with your whole body as if you're leaning into a headwind. This helps maintain forward momentum and more efficient posture. Now that we've covered the importance of posture and forward lean, you're already on your way to a more efficient run. But there's another critical aspect that can make a huge difference in your performance. While everybody seems to be talking about your running cadence, have you ever considered the power of maximizing your stride length without overstriding? How you achieve your stride length can dramatically impact your speed and endurance. Get this right and you'll not only run faster, but you'll do it with less effort. So, how can you optimize your stride length without falling for common mistakes? Well, most elite distance runners run with a cadence of around 180 steps per minute or above. But it's not just about copying their cadence. That would be a huge mistake. It's about understanding the dynamics of your own body and stride. The goal is to land your foot beneath a flexing knee. This is the most important part, regardless of whether you're a heel striker, forefoot runner, or land on your midfoot. Let's break this down with an example. Watch this slow motion footage. Notice how he lands with his foot beneath a flexing knee. This is the key to an efficient stride. By landing this way, you minimize the stress on your joints, reducing the risk of injury. Now, you might wonder, how can you increase your stride length to run faster without overstriding? It's a common question, and the answer lies in the concept of stride angle. Your stride angle is the difference between maximum hip extension and maximum hip flexion, as your legs move in opposing directions with each stride. As one leg drives backward, how high is the knee drive on the forward leg? This balance is what creates an efficient stride. To work on this, focus on the knee drive aspect. Aim for a high knee drive that feels natural and balanced. This will help you avoid overstriding, which is a common issue where the foot lands too far in front, causing a jarring heel strike and increased stress on your joints. Remember, as your pace increases, your knee drive should become more pronounced. Conversely, for slower paces, maintain a steady but not lazy knee drive. This prevents overstriding and keeps your foot strike light and efficient. So, practice adjusting your stride length in relation to your pace. It might take some time to get used to, but once you do, you'll feel a noticeable difference in your running efficiency. With your stride length now in check, you're well on your way to a more fluid and efficient running style. But even with perfect posture and stride length, there's another element that can make or break your running efficiency. It's an aspect often underestimated, yet it plays a pivotal role in how you run. This next bit is a simple yet powerful part of your running technique that, when mastered, can significantly boost your running efficiency and even prevent injuries. And no, it's probably not what you're thinking right now. It's your arm action. Surprised? The way you use your arms while running is more than just a complementary motion. It's a crucial part of your overall running efficiency and balance. When you think about your running style, it's easy to focus solely on your legs, but your arms play a vital role in balancing your body and maintaining rhythm. Let's dive into what effective arm action looks like. First, check out how elite runners tend to use their arms. You'll notice a balanced rhythmic motion with arms swinging in coordination with their stride. This isn't just for show, it's a critical part of their running mechanics. Your arms should swing in a relaxed yet controlled manner. The movement originates from your shoulders, not your elbows. Keep your elbows bent at about a 90 degree angle and swing your arms straight forward and back, not across your body. This forward backward motion helps propel you forward and keeps your body aligned. If you gently place a bit more focus on the backswing of your arms, you'll feel how it sinks with the backwards drive of your legs, pushing from your hips using your glutes and hamstrings. Remember, 
Efficient arm action is not just about moving your arms faster or more energetically, it's about creating balance, rhythm and coordination with your entire body. Get this right and you'll be amazed at how it can transform your running technique.